Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Mac 20 Questions and for Video Magical. And today I want to have a look at the timeline in motion. There's a few things you can do with it. You can decide whether you want to have the timeline counting in timecode or whether you prefer it to count in frames. Whichever you prefer. So you can have it shown in frames. So this is a project which has got 300 frames in there. Or I can have it set to show the timecode. And when it's showing the time code, you can have it showing the current time or the project duration. The moment it's showing the project duration, let's change that to show the current times. So when I press spacebar to get it to play, we can then see exactly where we are in terms of seconds and frames. Depends on what sort of animation you're doing, whether you want to have it in time code or whether you want it in frames. Uh, quite often I tend to work with it in frames, but uh, there could be occasions where time code would be the best choice. OK, so let's just uh, put a couple of keyframes in there just for doing something. Move the playhead to here and I'll just change the size of this. Option key shift and bring it down in size. Let's move it on a couple of more frames. Well, that's something you can do as well. If you want to move it to exactly to frame 150, if I tap on that there, then put in 150. It moves to me exactly frame 150 and that's very useful. And then what I'll do is I'll bring this back out again. Now something else that I want to do is if I'm working on just this area of the uh, animation, then I might want to just look at that animation, have the playhead just playing over this bit and not playing over the whole of it. So I can do a marking of where I want to play. Say I want to play from here. And if I do Option Command I, I can mark the input in there and go to there. And I'll do Option Command O. So now when I play it, It'll play just within that particular range. So that's quite a useful little trick. When you're using this tool here, by the way, don't forget to turn it off. I'm always forgetting to turn it off. This, which is sometimes why it's a good idea not using that and using the manual way of putting in keyframes instead. Something else you might want to do when you're in the timeline is to have a look at the keyframes editor. So let's do that by pressing this button down here. And here we can see our keyframe editor. At the moment it's showing all the things that are changing on here, which actually is only this one here really. We can make some alterations by moving this around. So for instance, we could move that across there. So what that has just done is changed the scale X and made it different from the scale Y. So let's play that and see how that differs. So you can see there the shape does a few odd little changes that it wasn't doing before. And also what we can do is we can do a right click on that or I do a double tap on the trackpad. And I can change the interpolation from linear into bezier. If we've got it in bezier, it means we can change the way that the animation works by changing these bezier curves here. You can get a smoother run with it by doing it that. If I select this one now, and we can do things like do it ease in and ease out, or ease both. So you see we've got a nice little sort of ease in there. So you can see how you can do a few sort of changes to the way the keyframes work by looking at this particular keyframe editor. Reverse keyframes, well, that didn't do much, did it? <laughs> but I tried anyway. If you've got a lot of things in here that have been changed and stuff, then what you can do is you can decide, well, okay, well, I don't want to have a look at that one for the moment. I just want to look at that one there. And that makes it easier to do any stuff that you need to do with that one there. And then you can put it back to showing all the stuff afterwards. Let's go to the library. And let's choose this arrow. I'm going to drag this arrow and drop it on the timeline here. Now, you see we've got a uh, thing just popped up there. And I can choose to do a composite or an insert or an overwrite. Let's composite for the first of all. So there's our composite little arrow on top of the previous thing that was there already. And you can see that it's dropped it on the frame that was suggested by the number that came up as we were dropping it into the timeline. OK, so another thing that I could do is let's take a blue rectangle this time and we'll drag this in and put it in at frame 60 and we'll do an insert. Now, if we do an insert, what's going to happen is it's going to move things around. So, in fact, it moved things around so much that it's actually pushed the arrow off the screen altogether. And we might have to go to the inspector, go to the properties. So if you look at the timing, it's starting at the moment at 300. So let's change that, bring it back in again, so we can see it again. Let's go back into the library again, and we'll take the hexagon this time. And we're going to drop the hexagon in there. 
this time we'll do an overwrite that'll do for now let's have another look at what we can do with motion 5 in another video Yes, it's that time again. It's time for clicking that subscribe button and subscribing to the Wizard Gold Mac 20Q channel. And you'll know when the next video is coming out and it's ready for you to watch.